What's up guys, Rage Quitting here, back with another video guide for you guys. This time we are doing an updated guide for Concealment Operative in Star Wars 7.0 PvP. Let's get right into the utilities. Alright, so the talents we're going to be taking. In the 23 row, we're going to take Roll Knife. Laceration's critical hit chance increased by 10%. Activating Laceration reduces Stim Boost cooldown by 10 seconds. So, Stim Boost is the ability that you use to gain um, a lot of damage and alacrity so it's one of your main abilities when you're getting ready to burst you use stim boost so having laceration reduce the cooldown of stim boost by 10 seconds every time you use it is going to be really nice because you can get your stim boost back faster and that means you'll be doing more damage overall okay in the next row here level 27 we're going to take debilitate um, this is your four second hard stun and it's on a very low cooldown so operative has the lowest cooldown of their Four second hard stun of any other class. Uh, if you have zero alacrity, it's on a base cooldown of 30 seconds, um, which is awesome. Uh, I have around 12% alacrity, so it lowers that cooldown uh, just a little bit. So mine is, you know, at 27 seconds or 26.9, as you can see in the tooltip. But if you're playing operative without a hard stun, you're doing something wrong, okay? Because you need to take advantage of the fact that you have the lowest cooldown of any other class. Um, that has stuns, right? So take advantage of that. Use the stun. Um, it's very much, you know, encompassed in your overall setup and the way you can get kills and stuff like that. All right. So we're taking debilitate here. Uh, in the 39 row here, I'm using crippling wounds. Crippling slice causes the next direct damage attack against the target to critically hit. This effect lasts 10 seconds. So uh, usually you pair this up with a backstab. Um, crippling Slice, if you don't know what it does, is it roots the target in place and it keeps them from turning their, their character. It keeps them from turning their camera and facing you. So, uh, Also, if you didn't know, when you're standing directly behind uh, an enemy player, they can't cast on you. So if you're standing behind them, like directly on, on their 6, you know, you're getting some free globals in there uh, without them being able to attack you. Unless they use cooldowns, right? So... Uh, this is really nice here. The other one here is the best defense. Crippling Slice applies a debuff on the enemy that lowers damage done to you by 20% for 6 seconds. Um, if you want to be a little bit more defensive and have that extra damage reduction, you can use this as well. Um, but typically, I'll just go with more damage because, you know, you have, you have other damage reduction abilities and you have, you know, self heals and things like that. Uh, and typically when you're using Crippling Slice on a target, you should try to get behind them so that they can't attack you. So there's there's some time in there where they're not even going to be able to hit you at all. So um, debuffing them with the damage reduction, you know, you're not going to get full value out of it unless you're just standing face to face with them and letting them hit you, right? So I'll just go ahead and take Crippling Wounds. Uh... Because, you know, you're typically always trying to get behind the target anyway when you do a crippling slice. So, uh, they shouldn't really be hitting you back uh, for the most part. So, we'll use crippling slice. We'll move behind them and hit them with a, a big uh, backstab that's an auto crit. Okay? In the next row here, 43, I like to take tactical overdrive. Recess the cooldown of stim boost, volatile substance, backstab, and shield probe. And increases your mastery by 20% for 15 seconds. Uh, so I'll show you guys later in the rotation section of this video, but uh, Tactical Overdrive basically just resets your, your big cooldown so that you, you can go ahead and just do another uh, big burst opener right away without waiting on the cooldowns, okay? If you don't take this though, uh, I would take Tactical Critical. So whenever you use your Stim Boost, you get a whole bunch of crit chance. Um, but outside of that, you can build stacks of crit chance while while you're DPSing. So it's just an extra passive uh, crit chance that you get, but then also when you activate Stim Boost, it automatically puts puts it up to the maximum amount of stacks, so you get extra crit chance there, okay? So <clears throat> up to you. I tend to use Tactical Overdrive though, okay? Moving up to the level 51 row, we're just gonna take a flat 5% uh, damage reduction. Uh, I feel like the other two 
you know, are kind of situational and don't really, aren't really used as much, right? So, uh, cloaking screen, which is your oh shit button, you press it to get out of any situation, you just go right into stealth. Um, having a lower cooldown on that is nice, but sometimes I play an entire match without even having to use cloaking screen anyway. So, it's kind of a waste of talent here if you don't even use it all that much or if you don't have to, but... 5% damage reduction at all times is uh, more consistent to me, so I'll just go ahead and use this uh, instead. So chem resistant inlays for the level 51 talent here. And then moving up to the level 64 row, we're going to take med shield. Your shield probe heals you for 5% of your max health when it collapses. Um, like I said, it's kind of like using chem resistant inlays with the damage reduction. So this is this is useful all the time whereas the other um, talents are more situational uh, adrenaline probe is not even on my bar because with concealment operative you don't really have a problem managing your energy resources so this is kind of a wasted talent here um, I wouldn't take it and then evasive screen uh, cloaking screen grants two seconds of evasion like I said it's the same way with the level 51 talent I don't even use cloaking screen that often, so I don't feel like I need this talent here to supplement, you know, using cloaking screen. So, you know, med shield healing you for 5% when it collapses is always good. Okay, so we're going to take this. Uh, level 68 row, we're going to use hollow traverse. Uh, this is your blink, basically. So, and you can use it on a friendly target or an enemy target, okay, to do this, right? So useful in so many situations it's on a relatively low cooldown 35 second cooldown uh, when when enemy players are kiting you and you need to gap close you can use it or if you need to get away from a big group you can target a friendly and use it right in in hut ball you know you can d hold the ball and like dash up to your friendly targets or whatever so very very reliable gap closer uh, on a 35 second cooldown um, is more useful to me. Uh, I tried playing with Flashbang. I, I really do miss having Flashbang because in the previous expansion, Flashbang was just a standard ability that you that you would have. Um, so I kind of miss it. But when I play with both specs, I really, I really miss having Hollow Traverse more than I miss having Flashbang. So kind of a toss up here um, in your style of play. Uh, whichever you choose, but typically, for me personally, Hollow Traverse is uh, better. Okay. In in group ranked, maybe you know taking Flashbang would benefit your team, especially if you're coordinated and people don't break the the CC when you use Flashbang. You know, I you know Flashbang is probably the go-to in in ranked you know group ranked PVP. But for regular war zones, um, especially if you're playing solo too. Uh, I would just take Hall Traverse. Okay, so anyway, last row up here, uh, Evasive Imperative. Every time you get attacked, the active cooldown of your evasion is reduced by 3 seconds. Or, Blow for Blow, activating evasion grants Blow for Blow, returning 150% of direct single target tech and force damage back to the attacker. So, both is really good. Uh, blow for blow can be really clutch when you use it at the right time. You know, you, refl you reflect a whole bunch of damage back to the attacker. Um, I've actually killed myself uh, on my Marauder, you know, jumping on an operative and trying to hit him with a huge raging burst when I'm already at like a quarter health and he'll, he'll just turn that on and then boom, I just killed myself. Uh, so yeah, really good here. So choose between these two, whichever you want. Right now I'm just using Evasive Imperative. Um, yeah, so that's it for the talents. All right, guys, so for the gear that we are using, I'm in full 326s, and um, it didn't really take that long. The more the more characters you have at level 80 and the more you PvP on all those different characters will kind of speed up the process for your gearing. Um, and I'll go a little bit more into that uh, later, but currently, uh, everything is 326. The thing that I really wanted to talk to you about is uh, the pieces that you buy from the vendor. So I don't have any accuracy on my gear, um, and that is because concealment uses all tech damage, and in PvP, tech damage is not affected by 
uh, enemy players, you know, defense ratings. So you don't need accuracy. Uh, accuracy only applies to weapon damage or white damage abilities. And the only ability that you have that does weapon damage is your rifle shot, um, which is barely used, right? So, and it's not an ability that's used for DPS, right? It's just, you know, if you want to tag somebody that's trying to cap a node or something like that. Um, so yeah, no accuracy on the gear. Get as much crit and alacrity as you can get um, to meet certain thresholds, right? Uh, if you want to lower your global cooldown by 0.1 seconds, you need a minimum of 7.14% uh, alacrity, and that's going to drop your global cooldown by 0.1 seconds. Um, a lot of people will say that uh, that's all you need uh, for certain classes. Me personally, I like to have just a little bit more alacrity so that my uh, you know cast times are sped up a little bit, like when I'm hard casting a, a heal, um, and having the extra alacrity does lower the cooldowns of a lot of your abilities. Not all your abilities, but a lot of them. So if, for example here, uh, I have around 12% alacrity, my hard stun is on a 27 second cooldown instead of a baseline 30%, okay? And then your other DPSing abilities like Veiled Strike, Crippling Slice, you know, Backstab and la Backstab, yeah. It's all affected by your alacrity that you have. So my cooldowns are shorter, so I'll get them back sooner. But 7.14% is the minimum if you want to lower the global cooldown by 0.1 seconds. And then beyond that, um, you can't lower your global cooldown by another 0.1 seconds until you reach, I think it's 15.41% alacrity. And that's really hard to do. Like right, right now, as the current gear is, um, without augments being um, affected by the bolster, it's kind of impossible to do that. So don't go super heavy into the alacrity to try and get that, you know, global cooldown minus you know 0.2 because it's near impossible okay so 7.14 percent at minimum and then beyond that it's just going to decrease your uh dps cooldowns by a little bit okay so <clears throat> how to do that though the way you go about doing that if you go into the vendor here this is just an example. I didn't really, I didn't buy anything from the vendor. I just used the boxes to get my gear. But if you look up on concealment, and for example, let's look at the boots. The boots have accuracy on them, but you don't want accuracy. So what you want to do is get the boots from the medicine uh, vendor, the healing version of the boots. The healing version of the boots have alacrity. Okay, mine have crit because I use the the boots from like another character, maybe my Marauder or my Sorcerer or something, right? Um, Thracian Pummeler, I think that's my Marauder. So the Marauder boots have crit on it, so I'm using those instead, right? So if you want to do it like this, what you want to do is you right click on your portrait here and set your loot discipline to medicine uh, before you open a PvP box. Right? When you do your weeklies, you get four wins, you get a box. Before you open that box, you want to make sure that you at least have a full set of 320 gear um, equipped. You know, the highest item level gear that you can have on before you open the box is going to dictate what comes out of the box. So, for example, uh, for example, let's say if I took this uh, implant off and I put a different implant in that's a lower item level because the implant is the lowest item out of all my gear because everything's 326 let's say this is a 318 or whatever implant when I go ahead and open the PvP box it's gonna give me an implant guaranteed because that's the lowest item level thing that I have and then it'll it'll bump it you know maybe to like a 320 right if I'm if I'm wearing a 318 I open the box I'm gonna get a 320 so if you want to target um, certain items like let's say you have you accidentally bought the accuracy, accuracy pants or something but you want to make sure that you get another pair of pants from the box that's not accuracy 
you want to set your loot discipline to medicine and then put on a lower item level pants that's not 326 right like target it so for here this is what i did with this character i put on this 324 pants and then i opened the box and then i got you know 326 crit pants right that's exactly what i did on this character because i had accuracy on it before i wanted to make sure i didn't get accuracy you know so i set the loot loot discipline put on 220 you know 324 pants open the box and then boom i got my 326 crit pants instead okay so things like that you can do with the with the gear also if you don't have a full set of 320 gear uh there's a couple ways to go about getting that you can just do veteran mode flashpoints with a friend or through group finder and just keep doing that until you build a full set of 320s um, but if you didn't want to do content like that if as long as you're keeping up with your dailies like if you go here to the uh, group finder activity thing and go to the solo tab all these things here give you uh, this aquatic resource matrix and this is what you need along with uh, Medal of Commendations to buy conquest gear from here so in the supply section here you know go to this gear vendor and then just buy just buy all the gear here this is all 320s and if you have uh, extra currencies you can just upgrade them to 324 as many of them as you want and then when you open your PvP box you know you'll get a piece of PvP gear that's already at 326 so you don't have to use any of the uh, Threshian product accelerants to upgrade them okay so anyway that was kind of long-winded explanation on gear um, but anyway so that's what I did here okay so no accuracy just as much crit and alacrity as you want to get so right now my crit is at 30% I think in PvP it, it bumps down to like 28% or something like that and then 12% alacrity which gets bumped down to like 11 and a half percent in PvP all right the tactical that we are using here is volatile strike uh, veiled strike automatically critically hits targets affected by your unexploded volatile substance and triggers it immediately okay and then dealing damage this way causes your next backstab to critically hit so this is very good for your burst setups and then for the implants we're using uh, locked and loaded package ranged and tech damage and healing is increased by five percent so just flat five percent uh, damage and healing increase at all times which is good and then gaining a tactical advantage increases your critical chance by 10 percent for 10 seconds so this is pretty much all the time so all the time I'm getting a passive 10% plus 5% damage. So pretty much always flat 15% damage increase. So we're going to use these two here. Tactician's package and locked and loaded. All right. Oh, and also we are using the <clears throat> Relic of Serendipitous Assault, which is the proct uh, power relic. And then Relic of Devastating Vengeance, which is the proct crit relic. Okay. Uh, I haven't tested yet but I will test to see which one does more overall damage you know the crit one or the mastery one uh, so that's up for debate right now but uh, for sure you want to make sure you get the power one because the power is the most important stat as far as damage goes so always pick up serendipitous assault relic and then for now I'm using the crit one because I haven't had a chance to test crit versus mastery um, but you know you can't really go wrong with with either way okay so that's what we're using for the relics all right guys let's get into the rotation here um, there's different types of rotations okay so you have your standard opener without um, you know using your double uh, volatile substance in order to get a second volatile substance you need to use tactical overdrive and that's from the talent here that we're choosing uh, if you don't have this talent, then you can't do the double uh, volatile opener. So I'm going to show you the double volatile opener, and then I'll show you um, your filler rotation, which pretty much consists of just using Veiled Strike, Crippling Slice, Backstab, and Laceration on cooldown uh, in between your volatile cooldowns. Okay, so <clears throat> every 16 seconds, you can use a volatile substance followed by a veiled strike that will do 
a lot of explosive damage, okay? Um, but in between that 16 second cooldown of Volatile Substance, all you're gonna do is spam your other DPS abilities uh, on cooldown, whatever's available, uh, until you can get <clears throat> your Volatile back, okay? Because of the tactical that we're using, um, when you blow up the Volatile Substance with the Veiled Strike, your next backstab is an auto crit. So every 16 seconds, you can blow up a Volatile Substance with a Veiled Strike, followed by an auto crit backstab, okay? In between that, like I said again, you're just gonna use your other DPSing abilities on cooldown. But also keep in mind, because we're taking this talent here, Crippling Slice will also make your next backstab an auto crit. Well, it doesn't say backstab, it says causes your next direct damage attack to critically hit. But you wanna use it with backstab, because backstab hits hard. So, <clears throat> standard opener, Volatile Substance, if you want to buff it with Stim Boost, which which you should, okay, we're going to use Stim Boost and then hit a Veiled Strike followed by an Auto Crit Backstab, okay? And you can Crippling Slice to uh, keep them in place so that you can get the Backstab off because Backstab is only usable from behind. So in order to get behind them, keep them still with a Crippling Slice, okay? Another thing to note here is Corrosive Dart. And backstab can also blow up the volatile substance, um, but you want to make sure you try to use it with a veiled strike. Okay. Uh, the only reason you would use corrosive dart is if uh, the enemy gets away from you, or you get you get pushed, or something like that, and you can't reach with the veiled strike. Then you just hit them from ranged with the corrosive dart, because corrosive dart has a range on it, and it'll also blow up the volatile substance. Okay. Your hard stun debilitate is on a very low cooldown, you know, 30 seconds or less. So with every Volatile Substance, you should try to hard stun as well to just keep them still. Um, it's kind of part of your rotation um, at this point. Very low cooldown. Uh, use it as often as possible to lock down your targets and kill them, okay? So <clears throat> every other volatile substance you should be able to hard stun them first and then set them up with the volatile substance veiled strike backstab combo okay all right so here we go we're going to buff ourselves first then we're going to volatile substance veiled strike crippling slice backstab we're going to reset our cooldowns buff ourselves again volatile substance again veiled strike backstab and then spam lacerations, okay? All right, so the rotation without using Stim Boost or Tactical Overdrive, if they're both on cooldown, is to just use Volatile Substance with Veiled Strikes and then using your other abilities as as they're, they're available. So also don't forget to use your hard stuns uh, as often as you can. So we'll open with the stun this time. So stun, Volatile Substance, Veil Strike, Crippling Slice to make sure you can get the backstab off and then you're spamming Lacerate and Veil Strike because it came off cooldown. More Lacerates, more Lacerates. Veil Strike's about to come up. Veil Strike, Lacerate, and Backstab and Crippling Slice as they come off cooldown. Okay, you get the idea. Now Veil Strike is available, so we're gonna keep spamming until we can get the Veil Strike or the Volatile Substance, I mean. So Volatile Substance, Veil Strike, Backstab, okay? And then you're just using your filler skills right now, which is still, you know, all the same abilities until you can get your uh, Volatile Substance to come back up. We have our Hard Stun again this time, so we're going to go ahead and Hard Stun first. Hard Stun, Volatile Substance, Veiled Strike, Cripple to make sure you can get behind for the Backstab. Hit a Lacerate, Veiled, Veiled Strike is up again, Lacerate again, Lacerate again. Okay, you guys get the idea. So as you guys can see, the rotation is actually very simple. Just go ahead and get on the uh, training dummy and practice it. I think the hardest part for operative in PvP is to try to keep up as much damage as you can possibly do, but also staying alive, using your utility um, to stay alive. So 
keep trying to you know refresh cultal probes on yourself so you can get passive healing incoming all the time uh you know use your rolls in in between your cooldowns so that you can um take less damage and resist abilities and stuff like that also people are going to always be trying to run away from you so you're always gonna have to catch up to them with the exfiltrate you know so you can keep up your damage um using hollow traverse if they get far away uh and then you can gap close and then also whenever you're taking damage turn the shield probe on because with the talent that we're taking you know when shield probe collapses you're gonna get some health back as well um so yeah that's pretty much the hardest thing about operative and if if you're gonna die um just go ahead and cloak right cloak out roll away run away from the fight get behind the line of sight or something so that you can come out of come out of cloak and use your out of combat heal um or if if for some reason you're still in combat then you know you can go ahead and just keep keep healing yourself and then come back into the fight and do more damage okay uh, everything is revolved around your volatile substance cooldown and it's you know a bonus if you have your your buffs to use along with it with volatile substance and veil strike um, whenever you get your tactical overdrive you know that you can do at least half half health worth of damage um, in one go right if you have over tactical overdrive and stim boost available with volatile substance uh, you can take someone from full to half or half to none right um, inside of a stun window as well so keep track of your uh, volatile substance your hard stun cooldown uh, your stim boost cooldown okay and combine them all together to do big damage outside of that you're just spamming your your filler skills your your other regular abilities right um, just waiting and biding your time okay and then also while you're kiting away from people you know you're also biding your time for your cooldown so uh, something to keep in mind but that's gonna be it for this guide I really hope you guys enjoyed it um, I really hope you learned something please if you did leave a like comment subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you guys on another one peace I'm just calling to say I